fishing. Even when you're in the mood, let's go fishing. Well, it's just me and you. Head on down to the fishing hole. Grab your hat, get your pole. Let's go fishing. When you're in the mood. Canadian Sport Fishing has been brought to you in part by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha Conquer Outdoors. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. Bait Cloud, bring the fish to you. Easy Docker, docking made easy. We got a fish on. <laughs> this is funny. I've had a couple of bass on. I've lost them. And I've got uh, both dogs with me. And they love, they love to be kayaking with me. Okay, nice bass. So I've got a river in the boat. River, you stay in the kayak, okay? And I've got Mulligan that swam out from shore and she was doing donuts around the boat. That was so cute. Oh, got off. Oh, it's okay. I've lost lots of fish over the last 40 years. So this is kind of fun because I've got my paddle with me, but uh, I really don't need to use it. Maybe just in an emergency. You can see that it's got an electric on it. It's a kayak, but to me, it's like a little boat. And I've got a pretty big deep cycle battery in it and uh, a small battery for the sonar and a dog that weighs about 55 pounds and me that weighs about, I don't know, 200 pounds. And you know what? It is fine. Listen to that sound. I'm not talking about traffic. Can you hear the crickets and grasshoppers? That's the sound of late summer. In about four weeks, you're not gonna hear a lot of that. It's one of my favorite times to get out on a small lake where it's nice and quiet, and I can enjoy some fishing for maybe largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, pike, who knows what. Usually I take my dogs and I love to go kayak fishing. Now, when I go kayak fishing, I try not to fish big lakes, even though I've gone out in the ocean and I do a lot of inshore and offshore fishing out of the kayak, sometimes 30 miles offshore. When I'm fishing in fresh water, I'll actually pick lakes that are smaller where there's a lot of narrows and back bays. So part of the fun when you're kayak fishing is having the right strategy so that you know where you're gonna be fishing. And a lot of the places that I fish are areas that the bigger boats and the guys that are bait fishing aren't gonna go into because it's shallower, there's weeds, stumps, trees, that kind of stuff. So sometimes you gotta go way back. But this is what kayaks are made for and you can take your pet, they're pet friendly. See if I got the hook into it this time. I used to have one dog that I used to take fishing. Now I've got two and I can't fit them both in the kayak at one time. So I tried putting River in the car. Oh, I can see why they got off. Very lightly hooked. Don't get off. I wanna show you. Come here. Now look, can you see? It's just on a little bit of skin right there. Look, that hook just came out. No wonder I lost the other ones. That's a nice, it's about a two and a half pound largemouth from the kayak here. River, you wanna smell? That's the smell of success, sweetie. Yeah, nice bass, hey. Oh, she's doing the full inspection. Yeah, she says, yeah, it's a fish. Okay, so I'm gonna let it go. And it's gonna probably take off pretty quick. Good. You know, kayaks have come a long way. Um, they used to be very simple. There's competition kayaks that are very short and that you run fast water and you do tricks with them, you know, and you go right into the actual uh, back current and everything in waves. 
Then there's kayaks that are designed more for speed and especially if you roll over, they're actually sealed. So maybe you've seen some, you know, indigenous people when they're up north in the Arctic, and if something happens, it just rights themselves. I like very simple kayaks that are extremely comfortable. They're called sit-on-tops, and I like ones that have adjustable seats that you can adjust them forward or back, and also the back panel on your back. So I try to stay under 13 feet. So my longest kayak for fishing out in the ocean is 13 feet, then some of the inland waters in the ocean or freshwater lakes, I'll go to an 11 footer and I'll even go to a 10 foot. And now some of these kayaks like the Power 100 are ideal because you can put an electric trolling motor on the back, a full 12 volt battery on the front, and you can troll with it, you can cast with it. I mean, for guys that are courageous, you could probably put down riggers on it and troll for salmon, you know, out in the Great Lakes. So kayaks have come a long way and also all the attachments that you can add to a kayak. I mean, you can rig the thing up to the hilt. So you can mount cameras on there, your fish finder. Uh, I, uh, I even have a bait cutting tray that I can use in salt water or fresh water if I'm using live bait. You know, so they're just amazing. The most important thing though is that they're stable and safe. You know, I find with uh, wacky worm rig, a lot of times you get some real surprises, even musky, believe it or not. I don't think there's any musky in this lake, but uh, you can get anything. This guy's hooked just slightly. You can see that worm hanging out. Actually, I want him to calm down because I don't want to get any hooks in my hand. Let's see if I can just grab him here. I'm gonna go, say he's gonna go seven, eight pounds. Lean, look it. Tell you what, getting a pike this size from a kayak is tons of fun. And I've got a lot of good friends that do the same thing. Look at it, beautifully colored. You know, some people don't like pike. I love pike. That was a fish. It wasn't me. Closed captioning is brought to you by K100. We make water burn. You know, in this week's adventure, I wanted to combine some saltwater fishing from a kayak with freshwater fishing and show you some different models of kayaks. You know, I really enjoyed fishing some of the large inland bays, we call it inshore fishing, off the southwest coast of Florida, and that's where I used the 13-foot kayak because the water was bigger and we were into some waves and chop, and I was primarily casting for spotted sea trout. But a lot of times you can get some big cobia when you're doing that, snook, redfish, um, and even some snapper. And then I went to a smaller kayak, an 11 footer, and it had a propulsion system like the 13 footer. I find that the propulsion system is ideal because it allows your hands freedom so you can cast. And even if you uh, are in the middle of a cast and you turn the rudder when you're propelling yourself, it doesn't take much and you can just pick up and reel again. I don't think I've missed any fish. I've had some hits when I've put my hand down, but usually when I start reeling it again, I'll get the fish to hit. So there's so many kayaks on the market it's really important that you choose the right kayak for the type of fishing that you're doing. All right, first hit. I was gonna put the anchor in, but I don't think I am. See if I can get that guy to come around. That would be classified as a keeper. That fish is over 15 inches. We're gonna be releasing them all. He's not hooked very well, which is okay. Now, can you see those teeth? He's got those little fangs at the top of his mouth. Beautiful spotted sea trout. There he goes. So what I'm doing, I'm actually fishing a very large bay. You can see behind me where the land is. And uh, I'm just casting and using, it's a hard twitch bait and working a bar. Spotted sea trout love to feed on eelgrass bars where there's lots of weeds growing. You know, if you're fishing fresh water, and let's say you're fishing warm water from a kayak, and you're choosing to catch like bass and pike, sometimes walleye too, they tend to be in the same area, especially largemouth bass and pike. A lot of times I'll use finesse techniques, and I'll work an area really slow. And sometimes I'll miss a fish once or twice, and then finally get it to hit. Tell you what, lots of fight. On light action, this is great. Come on. I'm gonna wait till he's tired completely. Actually, it's nice that they haven't been inhaling the wacky worm because I don't have a wire leader because I'm really bass targeting here. Look at 
that a nice fish out of a kayak? I can get these all day long. This guy's hooked just in the edge of the mouth. Open your mouth. Don't rip my worm apart. Come on, get that worm out first. There. And then the hook. I do have pliers right up my feet. There. Isn't that a pretty fish? I put them in the water and they usually splash when they take off. They look like they're sleepers. No, that guy was nice and quiet. So the one thing that actually is helping me, you know, I'm using this uh, shaky head has like a long worm hook. So you can see that hook is probably about, I'm guessing, two inches from the tip of the hook to where the actual weight is because it gives you a little bit of room. So even if a uh, pike with its teeth grabs it, you know, even has it totally in its mouth, he's gonna have mostly hook. And then of course, I've got a little rapala snap right there. So that snap is also like a quarter inch, half inch, which helps. So even though I don't have a leader, and this by the way is 15 pound fluorocarbon, and then I have, I think this is 20 pound uh, braid. I like to consider myself a wacky fisherman. And I mean that in a couple ways. You know, most of the time I don't wear a life jacket. I have life jackets in the boat because according to the federal government, you're supposed to have that. But uh, when it comes to kayak fishing, I cut that part of wacky out. So I always wear some kind of a personal flotation device. And all of my friends that don't normally wear life jackets when they're in larger boats, when they kayak fish, wear life jackets. Now the other wacky part that I'm really proud of, I love fishing wacky worm rigs. And there's a company called Fishing Complete that makes a whole selection of worms and also the wacky tool that you actually um, put the O-rings on your worm and then all the hooks, all that stuff. So I actually have these kits that are just wacky kits of all different size worms. Some are salt coated, some sink, some float, some are really flexible, limp, some are pretty stiff. So I have all kinds. If you've never tried wacky worm fishing, especially when you're fishing in clear water, and sometimes when you miss a fish with another lure, you should always have a rod set up with a wacky rig. I was gonna say, the nice thing about using a wacky rig, sometimes you can be right underneath you, whether you're in a kayak or a boat, and they'll still hit. So it's what you call a grass bass. I'm gonna try to get all the stuff. It's not a huge fish. Oh, River, stay there, sweetie. Look at, a little largemouth. That guy's about a pound and a half. I'm guessing he's about 13 inches long. River, don't think about it. I know you're fearless. Look, have a smell. That'll calm you down. There, perfect. And there he goes. I've been using this kayak called uh, Power 100. 100 stands for 10 feet long. It, it, it's called a kayak, but to me it feels almost like a little boat, but it looks like a kayak. So it's not too wide. It's a little bit higher than a normal kayak, but not too much. It's got a tunnel hull at the back, a V hull at the front, has a transom, so you can put an electric trolling motor on it, and it's got this unique feature at the front of the kayak, so it's balanced really perfectly. There's this uh, lid, it almost looks like the hood of your car, and that's where you can put a full-size 12-volt uh, battery for your trolling motor. It reminded me a lot of fishing out of a bass boat, and the, the seat that's in the Power 100 is elevated, and it swivels 360. You can see that I've got a lot of confidence in the three rigs that I've got rigged up on the actual rods that I've got today. Now purposely, I have two spinning outfits. They're right here. And they're both about the same. I would call them medium light action. You can see that I've got a little bit of tension on the line and the rods and how much they're flexed. So they're flexed quite a bit. And then I have one that's a little bit stiffer. That's my bait caster. And the reason I have a bait caster there if I'm casting plugs with multiple hooks, I like to be able to target cast, and a big caster is ideal because you slow down the spool with your thumb and you get that lure to land exactly where you want. Now you'll notice that I have my lure, this is a raffle and it's up the rod, I have it on a guide way up here. I don't have it down here on the hook keeper. And that's one big tip that I'm gonna give you, especially um, on uh, a big casting outfit. If you're using a lure with three trebles, when you're in a kayak and it's anywhere like your shoulder height, or elbow height, it's very easy when you turn or you go to cast to get snagged up on the hooks.
know, this is kind of nice. I was uh, using that power kayak earlier. Now I've switched because I brought two with me. This one has a propulsion system. So even though I'm not using an electric trolling motor, I can use my feet. And uh, the nice thing is that it's got a really good rudder system. So I can control it left and right very, very easily. That fish was just off this little piece of wood that you see right here behind me. It's funny because it's midday, the fishing has slowed down a bit. So I've tried uh, the wacky worm. I tried casting a minnow imitation, a shadow wrap shad. And it looked so good, I didn't get any hits. And then sure enough, went back to the wacky and I got a nice little large mouth. This one was hooked just nice. Look, right in the roof of the mouth. I'm not gonna really do much damage. I'm just gonna pop that hook out backwards the same way that he came in, just like that. And look it, nice little largemouth for midday. You know, I've been working this, uh, I'm gonna say it's about the eight, nine foot break. Come on, take off. Wow, he took off like a pike. I've been fishing this eight foot uh, break, seven foot break. And it's interesting that most of the fish, even midday, are just off the shoreline. What I really like is the propulsion systems that are on the market. And this is what the actual propulsion system looks like. And it's so slick because you take it out when you're not using it, and it literally drops into place at the bottom of the kayak. Now, I don't really understand the technique, but this is what propels it. See the way the fins go? Left and right. Let me hold it to you this way, look. Left and right. It's not like what you think, like a paddle boat, you know, where there's something that's churning the water that's pulling you to where you're going. This is actually, look, isn't this amazing? They're kind of like just uh, fins going left and right and left and right. So what I like about this particular kayak is it's 11 feet long and uh, it's not too wide, but it's very stable because it has like a tunnel hull. The other thing is that it has all these nice sliders. You see these here? Lots of them here. This one has four right here. You can add more if you want, but it's kind of nice when you get them. So you can put all your attachments. So I've got my sonar here, I've got my transducer, I can put more rod holders. You know, I've got a, a camera here, but I could put one also on a slider there. And I really like the rudder on this boat because you can see the cable, it's quite strong, and you can release the rudder down, and the rudder control is right here. So if I push the, uh, the rudder control to the right, the boat turns to the right. If I push it to the left, it turns to the left. And then lastly, you want to have a comfortable seat. So this seat is adjustable. You know, I usually pull it and have it pretty vertical so that my back is uh, nice and comfy. I don't strain it, just like that. And you can see the material. And one thing that I really like is you can actually put material in here for your lumbar. See, there's a gap here. So I have the actual vigorous cushion there so that it's even better and softer for my tush. But you can actually put a small towel in here and that really helps for your back. Because when you're fishing all day, even though you can stand up, and I do every once in a while, you know, you're pretty well sitting down. It's just really comfortable. Is that a bluegill? Cool. He's a pretty fish, isn't he? That's a nice bluegill. You know, sometimes we're using some of the larger baits like for bass and pike and, you know, even walleye, you'll get these guys to hit. They can be pretty aggressive. So look at how, how big that bait is compared to the fish. Well, you know what? I mean, this guy's too small, you know, for eating. If they were another inch or two bigger, you get some shoulders on them so you can actually eat them. There's probably a good number of them in here. I saw quite a few just swimming around, around my baits. Just gonna put them down. It's your lucky day. Don't eat junk food, okay? Okay, there he goes. You know, when you're sitting in a kayak, even a sit on top, and your head is probably within 48 inches of the water, it's a whole different perspective. 
I really like it because you're literally down at the level of the fish. You're not standing up in a boat, you know, or where there's a front or rear casting platform like a bass boat or a saltwater skiff and so on. And I don't mind that. It actually enables you to cast, you know, flat cast and make your lure skip if you're using soft plastics, you know, along the shore and up the docks or where there's trees that are hanging in the water. The one thing though that can spook a lot of people is when you hook a fish. I've had fish like pike literally jump in the kayak. I've had, a, I've had bass hit me and rebound and go back in the water. I've had fish go right across the kayak. So, I, I, you know, and that's because you're so low to the water. And a lot of times you have to be careful because you'll be ready to reel in and cast again. And the fish doesn't know that there's a kayak there. So it'll come up and literally hit the lure or miss it or hit the kayak right when you go to lift up to cast again. So this low perspective I think is neat and it makes you really appreciate things when you're that close to the water. You know, I can see the vegetation very easily. Uh, you know, I admire all the little things like the lily pads that are on the surface. And a lot of times you can spot fish. Finally, I've been throwing this uh, shadow wrap shadow round. It looks so good away from shore. And this is the first good hit I've had on it. And this, I kind of feel bad for this bass because it kind of got tagged. It's got the back hook in its mouth. Oh, there we go. And it got one tagged just onto the side. There. I'm on. Got one out and got another one in. Nice little largey. It's going back in the water. You know, this bait is the perfect size and the perfect running depth. You can see that it's got a very little lip and shallow lip. That means it's not going to dive too deep. So it's, it'll probably go down on like a 100 foot cast, maybe five, seven, eight feet. You can see the weights that it has inside. Those weights do a couple of things. One, when you're casting, helps for casting distance, but also there's a very light rattle from side to side. So this lure is pretty deep. So when, when it's uh, being retrieved, it has a really nice flash and wobble from side to side. Now, I've got a whole box full of small crankbaits. They're all in here. You can see this crankbait is also very short and stubby and it has a shallow lip, so it's designed to run shallow. This one as well, even though it's got the loud rattles. And then I've got some rattling baits. And of course, you know, I'm like most fishermen. Can you see my rattling baits? I'm kind of kidding, because you know, unless you put one bait in one compartment, they're gonna get caught up like that, no matter what. Canadian Sport Fishing has been brought to you in part by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha, Conquer Outdoors. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. Bait Cloud, bring the fish to you. Easy Docker, docking made easy. And it's funny, because I, um, Mulligan in the kayak, if she doesn't jump in and try to get in the kayak out, you know, away from shore. So I went close to shore, Mulligan got out, she climbed in. So that's one thing, you know, when dogs are used to being with you. And you know what? They're great companions. I couldn't, I don't think another person in this kayak would do very well, but one dog is perfect, eh, River? She goes, yep, yeah, perfect for me and you.